Hey, everybody. How you hey, doing, how John? Hey, everybody. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> so here we are for neural filters in Photoshop, Photoshop neural filters. And to yeah. let everyone know, we're going to be going over skin smoothing, smart portrait, maybe some makeup transfer if we have time, landscape mixer, style transfer, maybe some harmonization, color transfer, colorize, which I love so much, super zoom, depth blur, JPEG artifacts removal, if we have images for that, photo restoration, which I know John has some great images. Oh, so uh, lots to go over, Photoshop neural filters. Stay tuned. Yes. Let's get neural. Yeah. So where have I heard that before? I just feel like it's <laughs> just like right off the top of my head here. Anyway, we, we got Heinrich from Germany coming. Hey, in. Heinrich. So yeah. So uh, where is it? Do welcome everybody. Let us know where you're watching from. Yeah. I'm we know you're the, out there. Don't be shy. I'm Speaking in Los of Angeles. Angeles. Oh yeah. Hey guys. I'm in Los Angeles where it's getting chilly, and John, yeah. you are. In, in uh, somewhere in Texas, deep in the heart of Texas, and Sweet. it's uh, it's raining, it's raining here. We got Jessica from Brooklyn. Yo, Brooklyn. Micah's here again in Livermore, California. Good to see you here. Oh man, glad Micah's here. That's a good Nancy. sign when Micah shows up. We know things. That's a good omen. Nancy from Thousand Oaks, California. Steve from Omaha. Uh, uh, it's raining. Derek, Derek says from my bed. From my bed. <laughs> Must be nice. Hello from Michigan. Pamela, good to see her. Her Facebook user from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Yeah. Jessica says it's raining here it's too. It's raining here too. Cloudy yeah. in Seattle. Kathleen. Think how grass our green our grass is going to be. <laughs> Lisa from Arizona. Yeah. Floyd from Georgia via yeah. Seattle at the moment. Okay, Facebook user, let me just remind everybody. So um, please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic if you're watching from the Facebook group. That's the uh, little StreamYard.com Facebook link underneath the live. Give that a click. Give permissions. That way we'll be able to credit you when you ask questions or comment. Thank you. Let me got uh, people from Munich. Munich. Norbert. Norbert from Munich. Aloha from Vancouver Island, dreary and cold. Oh, man. Hello from the Netherlands. I would love to visit your Vancouver Island sometime, though. That'd be I know, very pretty. Calling me from Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> Dave, good to see you, Dave, from Liverpool, nice. UK. We got some from Minnesota. Travis is in the house. Good to see you here, Travis. How much hey. fun is this going to be? A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I hope. <laughs> I think so. Dean from Stafford, Virginia. Anne. Hello, Anne. Hello. Hello. That's awesome. Huntley. Huntley. Sunny it's as sun hell. And as hell. <laughs> Heinrich Einleinsman da Binch and next next so I am. Is that how you say it? I tried, I tried. And Anne from Louisiana. Yep. So oh. yeah, how do we give permission? Good question. Uh, let's see, too many things come. Once again, uh, you would please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic so I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. That's the StreamYard.com slash Facebook link underneath the live. You might have to scroll through the uh, descriptive to get to that, but it is there. It's a link in um, amongst many words. Ed from Minnesota. You guys, all right. Well, we got a lot to go over, so um, you hey guys, and uh, Leslie from Jacksonville, Florida, on board. All right, cool. So, yeah, lots to go over. So, um, let's start jumping into some neural filters in Photoshop. You want to go first, John? Me first? What do you want? Did I win with? the coin toss? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Invisible age before toss. beauty. Uh? <laughs> No, no, that doesn't work either because you're older and better looking. I hate that. Whatever, man. I just want to give a hey, quick shout out. Can we do this? It's Veterans Day. I wanted to say uh, happy Veterans Day to our uniformed folks. Uh, yep. Thank you for your thank service. Thank you. 
This is speaking of the top of my head and all. I was trying to segue and be all clever, but it's not working out. This is my dad's hat. He was a veteran, and uh, I found this in the closet today. I was like, "Yep, smells like mothballs." That's dad. But uh, <laughs> yeah, good, good shout out. Oh, yeah. Cover up the shiny head too a little bit. So anyway, all right, shall we move on? Okay. So, all right. Um, all right. Want me to jump in first? Do yeah, we jump walk? in, man. Yeah. So let me move that. Andrew, over you are the man. Let's go. Let's, let's do go. this. Okay, so let's see. Yep, that is me, right? Oh, that there you, you see are. my screen, right? Which it's one are me. you, the left or guy on the left or the right? Which one is you? <laughs> I'm the big fish on the right oh, here. That's what I thought. <laughs> big fish in a small pond. Yeah, looking okay, good. So, okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Got a variety of images open. Instead of having to go back and forth, I thought I'd just bring everything open. So um, in terms of neural filters... And I showed you the grouping. So let me show you that again, though, while we're here. I'm going to start off with one of the top ones, skin smoothing. So with skin smoothing, I have this image here. And in general, the way I like to work when I'm in Photoshop is I hit the F key. And that gives me a nice neutral gray background to focus mm -hmm. in on my image. I'll do a little Command Plus on a Mac to zoom in. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of... Um, some acne problem going on, a little texture. And by going up to filter, neural filters, that opens up this panel. And as you can see, the top one is skin smoothing. So with all of these, as you hover, it gives you a quick little descriptive, little preview. And then you will see like there's like a button to the right side. So the minute that you click to the right for this one for skin smoothing, You'll see there's the process at the bottom, which already happened. It went so fast. And it already kind of took away some of the uh, the texture or the acne. And a good way to see the before and after, and let me kind of zoom into this corner, you can click on Show Original. And then when you look at the image, you can see this is before. And when I click it again, you can see it after. So it brings it down. It, does, it didn't completely eliminate it, but it did a really great job. And I do think it looks very natural. So that's one thing I really appreciate about it. On the panel itself, you can see there is a blur option. So if you move that to the right, you would blur the image even more. And, um, you know, it makes the edges obviously softer. I'm not sure it even needs that. And then there's smoothness. So if you move that to the right, that would kind of smooth out some of the other kind of textures here. But I'm pretty happy with the way it is. Um, once again, before pretty intense after yeah. it's kind of more natural we're just gonna you can focus on the but handsome, it, handsomeness of the model yeah. yeah yeah it didn't uh smooth it so much that you don't see pores anymore because you've seen some where they look like mannequins but that did right. a wonderful, wonderful job of uh, smoothing it out but retaining texture right and i do think it does a great job at mapping the image so that it does not um, smooth out like areas of definition such as his eyes around his mm -hmm. nose and lips and then you'll notice that whenever you work with any neural filter if you look at the bottom there is an output option and the output option has various options so the first one says it would be applied to the current layer which i would basically never do and then as you click the little drop down you'll see that it says new layer and then if I do that, that would just create a whole new layer with these changes. And then I could add my own layer mask to mask out certain areas. Or you can choose new layer masks. And then when you do that, it will show it as just what is focused on and what is being kind of masked immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also choose smart filter or a brand new document of this image. So I will tend to choose new layer. And then I hit OK. A little time and then it brings you back into Photoshop. So then you have a new layer above, so you can turn it on, turn it off, mm. and you can see this quite quite the difference, but it's still very natural. You can still see the texture of the skin. And then, as I said, the areas of definition, such as the eyes, are not touched. Um, now, with this, what I might do, just as an example, I'll zoom in a little bit more, go into like a cheek area. So a couple little areas that kind of stand out for me. So yes, I would choose the spot healing brush, hit the left bracket to make it just a little bit bigger than the area. And then I would go in 
and kind of clean up certain ones, just right. spotting. But yeah. What a, what a head start it gave you. Yeah, exactly. A lot of time there. And and maybe you even want it to be more natural so you're not going to go back in and do these type of extra retouching. But I'm just showing you the typical ways that you might balance it out. So wonderful. So yeah. So there's that. Excellent. Um, and John, did you have an example that you wanted to show? Uh, I do have some. Uh, let's see. We're going to go uh, down the list. We had one question. Uh, where uh, was the skin smoothing pull down? I guess you're like, talking about where is the neural filter? And right. if you so go let me, to. Let me show you that yeah. again. Would, please. So yeah, that'd be great. To... Yep. Okay. So once again, it's under filter. Now, something to be aware of that a lot of people kind of get confused about. Um, since I've already worked on this, if I go up to filter, you'll see that right at the top, it mm -hmm. says neural filters, mm -hmm. but you'll also see under filter, it's the third option down. So it's, it's very important to understand that if you choose filter and choose neural filters, third option down, mm -hmm. you will be going into it directly. And then you can choose any option in the neural filters. Whereas if you were to choose the top one, neural filters, it would apply the previous settings. So as an example, if you had a black and white photo and you wanted to colorize it in neural filters, but you chose this top one, it would try to do skin smoothing mm -hmm. when you are trying to do, say, colorize. So always remember filter, third one down, you go in and you have all the options, whereas the top one would reapply the last step that you did. Okay, so it's filter, neural filters, and then these pop up, and then there is skin smoothing the top one. And I'm gonna hit cancel since I already did that. And then also let uh, let John do one. So um, Ooh, shall I share your screen, John? Got some folks jumping in here. Hello, hello, thanks for nice. thanks for showing up, guys. I'm and share, share your, your uh, screen now. Yeah, sure, let me uh, field this question real quick from Ellen. These exist in the current version of Photoshop. And yes, they do. In fact, there's even some more in the beta version. Uh, we, I don't know if we have time to get into that, but uh, yeah. Yes. Mainly the backdrop. I think backdrop is the main main different one in the beta new. version of Photoshop. Correct. That's as far as I know, right? I believe so. I haven't done a whole lot of the neural filters in the beta version, but I, that sounds right. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, so yeah, for skin smoothing, you want to jump on that and also ooh, skin smoothing. Sure. Well, let's see. We got some. Uh, let's see. Um, bu -bu 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 oh, skin smoothing. Hang on. I had a nice, lovely image for skin smoothing. Uh, so I've got one here that is. Uh, hey. I think that might be Lisa Carney. All right. She's always complimentary. Thank you. She is a, a, a nice, nice person. And uh, whoever that is, I appreciate that. Um, so, so you have an example for skin smoothing, like, you know, retouching action. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now this one's kind of extreme. I got this one from Adobe stock. And, right. uh, so, uh, what I kind of like to do is I kind of like to have, Oh, that was stock. Ian Sayers. Good to see you here, Ian. Oh, Hey Ian. All right. Micah says Lisa rocks. Well, it's officially a party now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I like to do, um, I like to go in and, uh, in my, uh, can you can you see yep. I'm zooming and I in? zoomed into full screen yep okay wonderful okay so um, here I like to uh, double click my background layer so it unlocks it or you can just click the little lock icon and show you uh, right here double click or just single click Boop, unlocks that turns it into a uh, a layer movable layer um, and I like to copy that layer so I have like a working copy and just kind of leave this bottom one alone uh that's up to you and so we'll go up to the filter and we go to neural filters as you see uh here neural filters now just to clarify there is a question um so does my image have to flatten to use these filters so two examples one you can either start where it is a flattened image and it says background mm -hmm. or you can do what john is doing right now where he double clicked first and made it a layer so right. either way you can go in and just to clarify too that once you're in the neural filters there's always those output options at the bottom 
So if it originally did say background and was flattened, you can choose new layer or new layer with mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well said, sir. <laughs> you sound like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I just went ahead and clicked it, like skin smoothing, just right out of the box. Did a mm. Really good job. Now it it may not be perfect every time, so don't expect it to be. But you see quite a difference between. Yeah, that's nice. And the before and after. Yeah, you, you really see the difference there. So I you could bump up the smoothing, smoothing, smoothness, uh, as you can see, because I'm such a smooth operator. Uh, <laughs> that I like to turn on the smoothness, but um, you, you don't want to. You want to be careful with that. You kind of be judicious on your use of the slider. You don't want to bump it up too high, or you might get some interesting results. And it might get too smooth and fake. I do like the way it keeps it natural, though. It's not overly it blurring. It does an amazing job. That AI is diabolical, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, say say we're satisfied with that for now. And I could do like like Andrew does. And uh, go in here. By the way, it, it leaves the little marching ants here. You can just deselect that with uh, Command or Control D. Deselect. And see, we'll zoom in on, uh, we'll call him, uh, call him Brandon. Zoom in on Brandon here. I don't know what your name is, kid. Sorry. <laughs> Go in here. Brandon for this session. Brandon. Um, I like to work with the uh, the clone stamp tool. We kind of get better results with that. So, clone stamp. so I hope we're not getting too, too deep in the weeds here. But the point being is that you can go in and fine tune this stuff. But it gives you a, a massive head start. And so, that's the whole point of this whole thing is that it saves you time and effort. So someone asks a uh, question that if a model is in a swimsuit, does it just do the face or an entire body? I do think it would uh, map the face and just focus on that. But I do believe yeah. that the, you do get the best results if you work on a portrait photo. Yes. That's that's a great question. And uh, I think, like, uh, once again, I think you're, uh, you're spot on there with that. Yeah, I think it would it would look for it. But anyway, I could I could I could do this all day and this would be really boring, but you get the idea. <laughs> nice. So, huge, huge time saver. So uh, here's before and after already. And what was that? Two minutes, three minutes? Yeah, so, nice. At the most. So yeah, huge, huge head start right there. So excellent. See cool. you, Brandon. Bye bye. Okay. Oh, don't want to give too much away. Here we go. No, nope, go away. You don't see anything here. Nothing to see here. All right. What are we doing? What are we going to do next? Okay. Let's so let's line. see. So looking at my images. So, yeah, so look at, look oh, look here's at here's a good example. I want to. Oh, yeah. Show okay. me. Show so, um, so let's see. Add stream. Cool. Okay. So another uh, issue I thought that might come up is beyond, you know, say, um, you know, acne type issues. Um, what if someone has a lot of freckles? So I thought this could be a great example to show how it also does really well with an image like this. So it's the same idea. I start off where you do not have to make it a, a, a layered file. It can start off as a flattened image, says background, as you can see here in the layers panel. And then I just go up to filter, neural filters. And like I said, you go to the third one down because if you were to choose the top one, it would reapply the last steps you had used. So I choose the third one down. Up comes the panel. And once again, I want to go focus on skin smoothing. So all I have to do is click the little button on the right. You can see the progress on device at the bottom goes pretty fast. And look at that already. Mm -hmm. This is before, this is after. Oh, already oh. without having to go in with like spot or the clone tool at like a 30% opacity yeah. and like going over all of this just you know what was that five seconds ten seconds at the most. see how wonderful it can deal with an image like that so that's before and that's after pretty pretty, pretty amazing really pretty so pretty, uh, pretty crazy pretty crazy this whole ai thing yeah, yeah. so the ai reads the uh, the boundaries of what has definition such as the eyebrow <clears throat> the eyes you know as you can see too if i zoom in it did a good job where even though it's a lot of a similar color the skin mm -hmm. and some of the facial hair the facial hair is still sharp here at the top and the bottom so it didn't get integrated into what got retouched out with the freckles and of course there's certain areas like around the uh, eyes where maybe the freckles are still strong and you might you know have to go back in and photoshop but you know for five 
to 10 seconds of work, it's it's pretty well done, I would say. Mm -hmm. Before, after. Fantastic. Cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Nice. Yeah, massive time saver. So, yeah, I'm doing like you. I'm, I'm, I'm going full screen here. So, uh, and right. then, And then once again, to show you the next one is the smart portrait. Um, not sure if you have an image for that ready, but I have something I wanted to show. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Andrew, <laughs> you've been teasing me with this all week. I have got to see, please. Okay, so Lisa, Lisa asks, okay, but why remove permanent attributes? Acne I get, but freckles. Yeah. Uh, you would be surprised. I've had a lot of clients who say, you know, this is who I am, but I kind of want to tone it down for this portrait. Um, in general, the way that people will request that type of retouching is, um, you know, maybe for their Facebook profile, they want the full spectrum of how they really look. But for like, say, LinkedIn or a job interview or something or a presentation that they're doing, they want to kind of tone it down a little bit. But people do ask for that. I've had that. Uh, someone says, use an MJ portrait. It rocks. <laughs> maybe mid journey. Probably they're saying, yeah. And Leticia's here. Good to see you here. Leticia Campbell. Great. Hey. So, so for this next one, um, I think, I think I want to give a little bit of a, have a little fun with it. So <laughs> next one. Is, uh, okay. So oh, we're going it's to, about uh, to, it's about to get crazy all up in here. Share my screen. You can see that now. Right. But, uh, so yeah, so I'm done with that. So I hit cancel. I'm even going to close that one. Don't save. I'm done with that. So don't save. And I hit F a couple of times to get back. I've already done that. So I think we're pretty much done with skin retouching. If I click this. So I have a, a portrait of me <laughs> oh, right Lord. after Max, after all <laughs> the excitement of Max. Yeah. And once again, like I said, I like to hit the F key. So the F key makes it so that you have a neutral gray background and don't have all the different images that are open as a distraction. Um, zoom in too much, but so maybe I'll go up the window and then choose the, uh, where is Navigator? Let's see if I can just click that a little bit and then use the slider to zoom out. Okay, so you can see that pretty much zoomed in. Um, and then same process again. Now, uh, one thing I haven't gone over yet is, let me just hit this a couple of times. So the image is, I guess it's more of an issue when we get to colorize, but I just wanted to remind people that Sometimes if you open up an image and you go to filter and you choose neural filters, um, sometimes like everything's grayed out or you can't even, or the filter where it says neural filters, it itself is grayed out. Uh, you would have to convert to RGB. So as an example, when I get to the colorized section and it's a black and white or grayscale image, I would have to go up to image mode, convert it to RGB so I can utilize the full access of color while using the neural filter for colorize. So I just wanted to bring that up. And uh, so go back to this image, close the navigator. So filter, third one down, neural filters. And then, um, so we have smart portrait. And then, so when you click on it, you get, as you hover, you get like a little preview. So it says creatively adjust portraits by generating new features like expressions, facial age, lighting pose, and hair. So in my case, I turned it on and then I wanted to make myself happier. And as you can see, there's this blue bounding box, which is showing that it's reading your face and your facial structure. Um, when I went to happiness and I moved it to the right, so I'll move it pretty far, like 45. And then you can see the progress at the bottom, progress in the clouds. So this filter processes image data in the cloud. Some of these are done processed in the cloud with the AI filter. And so something like this might take a little bit longer, but it is changing the pixels. It's changing the structure of my face. And there comes scary. Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry. I mean, uh, no, that's great, Andrew. Real so cool. The, really yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Adobe, the Adobe overlords think that I'm evil when I'm happy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, <laughs> good afternoon. Clarence. So I just had to show that one. <laughs> so before, 
not so happy. Probably. Very happy that I've taken over the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's bring it back down to show that it might work if I bring it down. So processing on device, I bring it down to say plus 10. And there, there it's more realistic. So there's kind of like an, an yeah. uncomfortable smile popping up, but it's much more realistic. So, yeah. you know, it's not an easy thing, though. If you think about what it's doing, and it's having to, you know, create a smile where it's opening up my mouth that's shut. It's adding teeth for you. So that's pretty I mean, intense kind of uh, alteration is, to make. Um, that's pretty crazy, right? But there. yeah, so at like 10, it's not so bad. Now, yeah. here's one that I really like with it, though. So there's like facial age. Obviously, if you go to the right, it's going to make me older. So processing on device, you see at the bottom. Oh. And there I am, like oh. gray hair, a little and bit. And you still got your face. hair. Yeah, I still got my hair, but it's just gray. I'm jealous. Yep. And then, obviously, I think if you go the other way, so I face the left. Yeah. Ripper snappers. That's right. So there I am in oh, high wow. school. Yeah. <laughs> which isn't too bad. I mean, it's still kind of it, you pretty know, good. It looks what I, I kind of looked like when I was high school. Not, not too Let's bad. See. Now, if I bring it back to yeah. zero for facial age. Of yeah. Obviously, it has to process at the bottom a little bit, so it'll bring me back. And some some processes take longer than others, by the way. That's right. But one thing that I like about this too is um, it has hair thickness. <laughs> yes. So if I move this to the right, <laughs> even just twenty per, you know, twenty points. It's pretty realistic, though. It's pretty good, and it does not affect like or distort the rest of my face. Yeah. Um, Pretty and slick. so, yes, to, to be honest, a little confession, I do sometimes cheat with my portraits and we'll go and retouch to Andrew. try to add a little hair. Now this will make it a lot easier for me to air, add some That's hair so. thickness without that. So that is pretty cool. So I tried that with mine, um, and I guess it's just because I don't have any hair, but it was <laughs> hilarious. I should have saved it. I, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it looked like I had a comb over. And oh, it, really? was, <laughs> it was just sad. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, and then and then just uh, to show kind of fun with this process, yeah, the age processing would be fun to take a young photo of an older person and see if it matches. Yeah, but you know, with this though, when I did the um, the facial age and went back, it did kind of look like me when I was younger, so it's pretty close. Pretty close. And I have no idea what I'll look like when I get older, so I can't tell you then. But uh, well, now you do. And then for <laughs> eye direction, if I move this to the right, You're looking over here, it's processing. See at the bottom. Oh, look! I'm looking over to the right. Looking, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So here's before. There's after. <laughs> wow. Now I have. I did use this on a group picture. Um, I had about on a four or five guys. I was taking a picture of one of them. Got distracted by somebody off to the side, and he was looking off to the side. And I tried the new neural filter. I think this is back. Uh, a few months ago, actually, when it may have been in beta, yeah. and it worked like a charm. It was, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Right. So then, if I bring it back to zero, hey, Chris you know, it processes and it brings it back. Chris is here. Good to see you here. And then, of course, if I move it to the left, bring it back that direction, then it should shift my eyes to look the other way. Yeah. There it is. So I'm looking there the other way. Go. And uh, yeah, I mean, to be realistic, there is a little bit of distortion around it. You might have to go in and retouch a little bit, but for the yeah. fact that it took me like literally five seconds, it's pretty amazing that it can shift that without distorting the area around the eye. Can you um, imagine how long it would have taken you? I'd say the, dare I say the old fashioned way, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's the way we're going to be speaking soon with all this. The old fashioned way. way. <laughs> Why back in the day, we used to have to spend hours doing this. Right, and now <laughs> under expressions, there's surprise. So let me take that to the right. Oh, let's please show us this. Processing on device. Ooh, I'm surprised. Oh, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> I was yeah, expecting surprise. Not bad. You do genuinely look surprised. So what would the opposite of surprise be? If I take it to the left. I don't know. What's the opposite of surprise? Or is that, maybe oh, relaxed. I knew that. Sleeping? Oh, I'm just, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah you're kind of like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> pretty good, though, all right? That's, that's kind of a better smile there than the, the happiness slider above. I like that. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. So I bring that back to zero. Then, of course, it always does the processing on device, brings it back. Um, 
So then we have anger. So here's the angry me. If I bring it all the way, you don't like right. You don't. You don't. Look at that. So she has a little bit of teeth. The eyes good. Pretty good. Like a it looks real nice. Like, uh, like fighting the UFC there. I don't know. Kind of, kind of tough there. Okay, then I bring it back to look at me. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring it to the left. So maybe what would I be once again sleep? Yeah, just happy, I guess. Yeah. Say that. Which uh, is a is a lot, a lot more Mister Rogers looking than the previous one, where you looked like Jack Nicholson from The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> a happy Jack Nicholson from The Shining. <laughs> All work and no play make Jack a dull boy. <laughs> Sounds just like them. <laughs> okay, so then Great. under global, you even have the ability to you move the slider to the right under head direction. Yeah, let me just show you that Which head direction. This and, one's truly mind-boggling to me. Yeah, so obviously you know you're you're shifting a lot of pixels. Um, mm -hmm. There's a little bit of an excess on the right, but it's easy to retouch that out and a little bit around the neck. But it, it didn't really distort at all on the left, and it did shift the angle of my face. So that's pretty amazing, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I bring that back to zero. And I'm not sure if this is what, say, the people at Adobe would suggest, but I like bringing it back to zero and then going the opposite direction. Oh, Becky brought up a great question. Uh, I wonder if this would help locate an older missing child taken years earlier. Man. Yeah, I mean, th that I that's exactly that. it, is with the... Um, these type of, you know, AI features that are happening and they're only to get better and better. It's going to enable like, you know, say police force and detective agencies to be able to mm -hmm. estimate what someone who is missing for a certain amount of years would look like. So yeah. it, it could end up being very helpful for uh, things Great. like that. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. So, so curious. So I'm moving the head direction to the left. Okay. Processing on device. And then there it is. Yeah. And very clean, really. I mean, there's a little bit of retouching a little bit of the neck, but here. Nothing you can't fix, uh, you know. Yeah, just the old fashioned bit. way. <laughs> and a little sharpening uh, yeah. of the edge on the right, maybe. Right. But it is pretty, pretty amazing for five great. seconds of work, too. Pretty, so pretty great. Gotta... Yeah. 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 Okay. And then we got uh, fix head alignment. So now that that's back, the square one, let's move this to the right and see what that does. Mm -hmm. I think law enforcement already has application show agent. Of course, Bob, but the point is, you know, this is something that is also helpful. And as it gets better and better, it might be something that they might reach out to Adobe and work with them for. For sure. So, uh, not quite sure what the fixed head alignment did. I moved it to the right, so I'm bringing it back to zero. And then if I move it to the left, I think that maybe because the head is already aligned, you would have to have like, you know, mm. kind of go back to this view. Some tilt or something. Um, exactly. So I think fixed head alignment would be as if I was like this or that. And then it would bring it back into like a straightened view. So, yeah. you know, you got to work with it. You can't expect it to do um, do everything. You have to have an issue. Uh, what did what did uh, Mika say? I said, yeah. Uh, this, is only get this is going to be a, it, it's only going to get better, basically, as they introduce uh, stable diffusion and, and, uh, Absolutely. Machine learning. So so this is pretty cool. So beyond the, the head alignment, there's also lighting or light direction. So if I move it far to the right, give it a little time, processing on device, you'll see that it did a little bit too much maybe to the face, but it does change the source of light. So the source of light is on the right side. Yeah. Now if I bring it back to zero, back to zero, it's processing. That could I can see that. Okay, so that's oh, back to zero. Wow. Now that and then I if I go to the left, uh -huh. just kind of double up what I already have. I already have light on. So oh. I think it 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 maybe got a little overwhelmed by the fact that there already was lighting on sure. the left side. Sure, so. but the fact that you can switch light from one side to the other that that's fantastic. For that could save you a lot I of retouching work. Yes, indeed, good. fantastic. And so with this, just remember that if you go to settings at the bottom you can also choose like retain unique details so that's like saying how much of the original photo do you want to keep and then mask feathering would be how soft that that edge would be mm -hmm. and then always remember before you hit okay that you want to double check what your output settings are at the bottom 
So yeah. you can choose to create a new layer or a layer that has a mask showing you, you know, just what's being worked on. But you always have those options, which is great. Um, and so I'm going to just hit cancel and then kind of come back to the room. And then in terms of the list, um, so for makeup transfer, I, you know, I, I've tried to get a bunch of images together for all these different things, but there's a lot of them. So for makeup transfer, I didn't really find a good example. Did you have one for that yet? Or should we jump on to the next? Um, for, for the, the makeup transfer? Yeah. You didn't find it. Yeah. No, I, did not. Sorry. I so, so landscape mixer, can I, can I show that or do you yes. want to jump in? I, I kind of just did the last one. So maybe yeah, it's your yeah. turn. You want... I'm, I'm enjoying this. You, you, you sure? I don't mind you hogging the whole thing, man. I don't want to hog it. <laughs> Leslie had a good question about uh, 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 removing the uh, reflection from glasses. Um, and I don't have a straight answer for that, but uh do you remember what the question was? It was uh, it's, a, it's been a while back, and I didn't want to interrupt you. But uh, let's see, can you remind me again, Leslie, uh, what what your question was about removing the the reflection from the glasses was? Um, oh, I got it. I got it. it. Seemed like okay. And it intelligently removes Thank reflections you. from glasses. So, to be honest, I think that is an excellent suggestion for another yeah. option for neural filters because yeah. i think the ones that we went through were pretty much focused on those specific type mm -hmm. of functions mm -hmm. and you can't expect it to remove reflections from glasses if that's not what it's looking for so that might be something that they will have in the future but i think the right. ones that i showed you were pretty focused on you know the eye movement or the smile but not necessarily on something like that yeah, uh, I wish I had a, a good answer for you on that, but there isn't really anything specifically, like Andrew said, that, uh, yeah. that addresses that. But wow, what a what a suggestion to make to the, so, to the developers. So, so for the next one, I was going to show the. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, the yeah. landscape mixer. Landscape mixer. Yeah, and I think we both have some good examples. Uh, Maybe yeah. I'll do a couple and then let, yeah, let you do some, so you don't think I'm hogging. <laughs> I had to okay. bust your chops, man. Okay, so here we are back in Photoshop. Okay, so I have this image. Nice Ooh. landscape. Welcome to got. Jurassic Park. From Pexels.com. Mm, cool site, by the way. Yeah, some good good free stock to, to begin with with images. So as you can see, this is already quite a, a nice photo. Some good drama going on, a good range of colors, very earthy, a little bit of blue and greens, but very kind of brown focus. Mm -hmm. um, so if I go up to filter, and then once again, go down to the third one down, neural filters. I'm going to go to landscape mixer. So I click on the button for landscape mixer and automatically there's a whole bunch of presets. So the thing to be aware of this is they have a bunch of suggested styles for you and you can scroll down to see even more. So three, six, nine, 12. So it's about 16 that they give you, which is pretty generous. And then of course, if you click on custom, then you could upload your own image. So if you have a certain landscape style that you think would be more appropriate, you can do that as well. But since they have all these great features under presets, all I need to do is click on this one. So I go from this kind of daytime earthy look Click on the winter scene. Mm -hmm. Processes on the device. What? Wait for it. There it is. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. That's pretty amazing. So I have to that say that is really incredible. That, what that is very well done because it it maps everything accordingly, and like the the distribution of like where the snow is just seems perfect. It's like it it understands the sense of depth that this mountain range has it's it's great and then I mean, so this is a little too chilly for me so maybe <laughs> i'll do like a little summer view with some yeah. green look at that oh. click of a button and we have like this nice green view so just to show you once again this is before by clicking at the bottom left that's the original and that's after that is amazing i think that is so well done so yeah and then you know, that's 16 different presets right from the get-go. 
You can also choose the strength. So I could like mingle the two styles if I would bring it back. So if I go back to 50, let's see, there's a little bit more brown coming through, but the green is there, which is quite nice and very natural. Um, and then you have like a day thing. So if I go to the right, mm -hmm. um, I think it would, yeah, make it more sunnier. Yeah. And then there's a night one. So if I wanted a night view, if someone said, oh, that's great, but can you make it like what it look at? That is amazing. It's nighttime now. It's yeah. even like, the, you know, it's at sunset. So you can see a little bit of the sun there, but the rest of it's getting dark. I mean, that's, that's brilliant. Fantastic. And a, a great question. And then there's even one called sunset. Does it work if there's a person in the picture? And the yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yes. It, right. It reads the overalls. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunset look, then there's spring, summer, autumn, I think all that. And then once again, you can choose at the output new layer or new layer mask. Mm -hmm. But so, so that I don't hog this. <laughs> You're never going to let me live that down. Right. <laughs> I don't like people hogging things though. So no, I'm, I'm, you know I'm kidding. So why don't you? Um, yeah. Do you have an image ready that I can then switch over to your view? I have an image ready. As a matter of fact, Mister. What, what did Chris say? Chris said something and it zoomed away. Oh. Okay, I got it. I oh, could yeah? see using this even for illustrations of backgrounds. Absolutely. Totally. We had a question. Pretty amazing though. I th I thought that that was really yeah. fantastic. Oh, I know. Okay, ready, John. Think of the, the implications. Screen. Uh, does it work if there's a person in the picture? Well, as a matter let's of let's find out. Let's find out. And their their faces aren't visible, but maybe it won't matter. So, okay. Now you must have been psychic, John, because here's the image you have, and that's I uh, I've been told that I I've been told before that I am psychotic. Um, psychotic. <laughs> oh, are you psychic? Oh, <laughs> that's different. That's a, a landscape mixer. Okay, so here we are, and uh, here we are, landscape. Now I'm going to go uh, to full screen view. Uh, full disclosure. Oh, yes. Okay, so landscape mixer. Landscape mixer. Uh, there's a beta next to it, so it is still being perfected by the mad scientists at Adobe. So um, hard to believe when it's those results so good. You get right? that those those amazing results. So let's see. Um, I, I I love that. It looks like springtime there, and they're enjoying the view. And oh, look at there! I can see my house from here. He says. But let's make it uh, let's make it winter. We'll just pu punch it all the way up there, and uh, it's process. Okay, so for this, yeah, you didn't even click on a preset. You just went directly to the winter slider, right? I did, I so, did. So I just went to see, straight to winter. So now and, there's even there's even more options than we thought. So instead of having to click a preset, you can go directly to the sliders, yeah. as he shows here, and then uh, move the winter slider all the way to the right. I what sure did. Preserve subject. Yes. So we're going to click preserve subject. So it sees that there are people. Now it doesn't show their faces, but it says, oh, there's, uh, there's people so sitting. So it takes the line. snow off their shoulders or something, right? <laughs> right. It looked like uh, he was like old man winter there. He's like, we've been sitting out here a little too long. Um, so they had icicles hanging off of them. And Someone says it would be great if the people were given hats. I guess if they had hats, snow yeah. on the hat. I know they're making me cold. Just looking. So <laughs> you look at them, and and they're still kind of on the warm side. Now I got to be honest with you, um, this is still in beta, and maybe it's my cop, maybe it's my machine, and maybe it's just me, or maybe I just had this maxed out too much. But you can't Ooh. harmonize the subject. Oop. Right. And Bob, Bob makes a good point. He says, I think yeah. it included the rock as the subject. It certainly which did. has the, um, you know, earthy colors. So maybe that's why it has that's a hard right. time. That's right. That's correct. But now, I, again, I want to point out two things. Again, this is beta. And when I when I clicked on the harmonized subject, which ideally would have made them more, uh, you know, color wise, match their environment. Right. You know what I mean? So they would have been not so warm and they would have been, they would have been kind of like that, that blue. So with the harmonized subject. So um, this is not a great example and it could just be the image. Maybe it's because it's such a, a large image, but um, I think if you, yeah, go John, ahead. John, I was saying, I think that if you did choose to uncheck preserve subject, yes. And then for output, you chose new layer. Oh. You could obviously just add a, a, oh, mayor, a layer dude. mask. And I did it. I did bad. I, that was a bad move on my part. I, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, so, yeah, let's try. So, yeah, turn off preserved subject. 
Okay. There we go. So there well, they are in winter. Yeah. And then. Uh, but now I want to. New layer, hit OK. And then when you bring it back into Photoshop, you add a layer mask and then you could paint on them to bring them out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of show. OK. So we still got that that error. But you know what? Here's what I did. I I, I was able to get all that. And. Uh, did you want to show that, though? Yeah. Here. Let's, let's show how, how we so do turn, it. So turn on the top layer. OK. Let's, let's go back. OK. Uh, sorry about that. Just okay. had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens to me ever. Okay, so we're gonna go in here, and I'm not gonna preserve the subject here. Right. But actually, I'm gonna preserve the subject. I want to preserve the subject. Okay. So there. Um, yes. Well, my my example was to not preserve the subject. Okay. And then you create a new layer, and then show that with a layer mask, you can easily just bring them back. We can do that. Um, oh, yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's yeah. Try so that. if you hit okay, all right, new layer, boop. All right, so we got that, and here's okay. So what we can do, yeah, sure, yeah, right. So then just add a layer mask and then paint over them to bring back, yeah, 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 sure. So let's do, let's see if we can uh, see if it'll select subject, even though it doesn't see faces. Oh, it's, it's processing now. I, I, oh, hey, good job. Good job, Photoshop. Here, we'll just add a little bit to it. And that's that's good. Okay, you did you want to add a layer mask? Illustration. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to add a, a layer yeah. mask. And now we'll uh, do that. Okay, so I inverted the layer mask. and Oh, and already you had a selection of them, so now... Can do a hue set here. That looks good, pretty good now. And I can bring the hue up. Let's see here. Actually, what I would do is just with the brush, yeah, with the brushes, bring back the uh, kind of winter scene on the stone as well as you know with the original background, and then just yeah. erase around that. I guess that's one way to do it. Um, so I played around with it. I actually went into Camera Raw and. I uh, took this. Let's uh, hide that. <sighs> Blended the original and uh, ended up with that. And just Ooh, that's kind of nice. Did, oh, some, yeah. just, just, just did a hue sat on them. Right, so they got a nice blue yeah. hue to them. So now they kind of match with the environment a little better. But ideally, harmonized subject will um, will blend. You know, the, your 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 subject with your environment better. Nice. Uh, with lighting and and, uh, and its color, so yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's nice, nice feel to it. So there's more more than one way to to, to do Making it. Making me chilly, me being in uh, you know yeah. California yeah. here, it's a little <laughs> a little cool for me. But it's a uh, it, it blows my mind how it, it recognized the the depth of like there's mountains over here, yeah, and there's stuff in the mid ground and. And it yeah. preserves some of the brown in the middle, which balances out nicely. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty insane. Uh, so that kind of cool. makes a noodle right there. Nice. But anyway, yeah. What's next? What are we doing next? Okay. What's what's done? Back, what's on the list? Back to my my trusty little screenshot of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so style transfer. Did you have some examples? I have a little bit, but do you have any? Um, that is a really cool option, but. Um, I always thought it'd be kind of cool to blend like a portrait with, uh, like in the style of Van Gogh or something like okay, that. Okay, let me try that. Then. Uh, so, okay, so I'm gonna go to. Back to uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm back to this image. Yeah, it's nice. And then I'm just going to go to this view so I could see. Uh, what is it? Uh, or maybe this. Maybe I'll go to this image. So of this image, and then I just want to see the name of the other one that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colorized style transfer. Okay, style transfer. Listen back. Okay, so I'm just getting an idea of the name. So this is the original image I'm starting mm -hmm. with. Okay. I go to filter, mm -hmm. neural filters. This comes up, and I say style transfer. So I click style transfer with a little button, and then automatically it has uh, different styles i don't i thought i downloaded these before i don't know why i have to download them again but like as you can see there's a the japanese woodcut 
mm. print. So if I click oh, on that, pretty cool. It you know see processing on device at the bottom, but then it automatically simplifies it. That's pretty nice. With mm -hmm. one click, I got that kind of woodblock print style. You can always adjust your sliders accordingly. Yep. And yeah, then if cool. I click here on the, like the Van Gogh painting, it's processing on device. That's kind of needs a little bit more work on that one maybe. But uh, yeah. and then top right. So that's kind of cool, like an impressionist style right there. Yeah. Um, I wonder, does the the size of your image might have something to do with uh, like how much check texturing you get too, how much you need to move the sliders? I don't right. Know. That must be a factor as well. So I'm just closed it and coming back. So it would be refreshed. And then I just go to style transfer. But this time I'm going to hit custom. And then I can mm -hmm. select uh, an image. And it, immediately list all the uh, open documents or photos or JPEGs mm -hmm. in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. This one cool. I know is Style Transfer Elusive Memories, which is one of my artworks. So it shows you oh, nice. a preview of that artwork right it's here hard. in the reference image. And then it's processing. See that at the bottom. So a little, a little intense, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, there's a strength Very slider, tough. so I can bring that down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so it's I can almost hear people's gears turning right now. <laughs> <laughs> the details at 100, if I bring that down to like 34, that it kind of breeze a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Um, That's an interesting brightness and saturation. Wow. Whoa. You got to gotta tweak it, but it's, it is a nice yeah. way to kind of take something and, and quickly uh, bring it into a different kind of look. Create it's a whole different style. Okay. Very cool. Cool. So I just jump onto that yeah. and then just go back to here. So hmm. just in the um, being conscious of time, there's so many options, but oh my um, gosh. Oh. what I would love to jump into, because I've got like a few samples I like to do, but I'll let you go first so I don't hog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Andrew, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> well, can we, can we can we skip down to some? Uh, uh, we got color transfer. Well, yeah. Colorize is the one that I'm all excited colorize. about. Colorize, colorize, yeah, is is great. Um, did you, you want to do an example of colorize, or shall I? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Let's I don't want to hog it, you know. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me here. You're killing me. All you right, got every other word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. Let's see. Uh, I've got. Okay. And then real quick, just before we jump in, okay. someone asked, will this play again later? So yes, always. Yes. This is recorded. This will be on my YouTube digital art drew. And then I will also be sharing that link while I try not to laugh after Chris's comment. These, these hog puns made me snort. Nice. <laughs> okay. So let's go over to john's screen okay so adding to stream there it is here i i have an idea okay this is this is crazy don't don't get mad at me andrew but uh, uh oh you're jumping out of order or something I, I think in the interest of time i'm gonna jump and i'm gonna do like two quick things and cool. two different neural filters because you can do that why not that's right power we have the power <laughs> unlimited power okay uh filter neural filters see i know what i'm doing all right, here we go. Uh, we're going to go to uh, something called photo restoration right here. And this, my friends, is uh, it's is going. Right, so you see, there's scratches on it. The lines yeah. going through. So a little background on this this uh, image, by the way. Uh, this is not a relative of mine. Uh, this is a a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. I asked him permission, and he said he'd be glad to. His name's John Moore. He's an author, and uh, he's on right. Amazon. So uh, uh, go check his stuff out. Okay, very funny guy. So, um, all right, so we can go here. We have uh, some options. Of course you have options. We have all the sliders here. Photo enhancement, enhanced face. Um, again, judicious use of the slider because you know too much and you end up with, uh, you know, uh, Andrew's uh, Jack Nicholson face. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, scratch reduction. Now, here's, here's a great one for uh, damaged photos. You don't need to do a whole lot, honestly. Uh, let's do maybe a third. See what happens. 
So it's processing. Do, 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 the progress do, do, do. bar at the bottom. Ba, 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 ba. And again, some some magic. Take, take like it, it's it's thinking. Photoshop is like, uh, mm, uh, mm. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, move that right there. Okay, okay. All the little pixels are being pushed around. The little pixel gremlins. Right. Are, yeah, it's pushed. reading whole image. Wow, look yeah. at that. So I mean, I think that <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Right there. So there you go. I mean, uh, he's looking pretty darn good. Uh, again, I yeah, completely got rid of that big one that right yeah, through his, uh, there was like a jacket. A big, there was a, a big horizontal one and a, a vertical one. There's one right like down his face and there. Chris so he, says, whoa. I know, right? Dude, that's all I have to say. Um, cool. And there's other uh, tweaks you can make. Um, so you can get in there and get really granular with it if you, if you want to. Uh, just noise reduction, color noise, half tone. So this one gives you a lot of flexibility here. But and, I mean, right off the Micah's off saying, the colorize it now. All yes. Okay. So since we're here in neural filters, uh, we can go to uh, colorize. And I haven't done this yet, so uh, this will be a journey we both take. Here we go. We'll go Becky to says, photo restoration is amazing. Kathleen yeah. says, impressive. Very impressive, yeah. Oh, so, so one click on Colorize and it already yeah. has this. It's got the uh, the nice uh, facial Sorry. skin colors. It's got yeah. the, the lip colors. It made a bluish background, which offsets it. And it has the kind of brownish, slight bluish uh, coat and hat. Yeah. There. Yeah. And uh, again, gives you a good jumping off point where you can go in and, and make your own. I know. That's what it says. I, booyah. Booyah. Ding dong, daddy. Um, let's see. Uh, what's great is oh, that. Oh, yeah. So, so, uh, Mike, yeah, that's a good point is, um, oh, you can yeah. add pins to the uh, preview you, image above the color as you need to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can, uh, output his new color layer. Uh, but you, if, let's say you, one, one thing that I thought was, uh, particularly of note here is that you can change, but well, you can also have different, uh, color profiles. It's kind of like, uh, Lots, so to speak. Oh, nice. Yeah, so but, more intense. Uh, yeah, the lipstick's you, a little uh, intense. Then. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little. The lips are kind of uh, looking fabulous there. But I mean, I kind of like the the no profile. And let's yeah. just from there, you can add more saturation. And someone says, uh, "Now I know what I will be busy with." Have a bunch of old photos. Yes. And uh, yeah, but yeah, you can. Uh, let's see. I want to go in here and let's say we'll make this. So let's see. There you go. So I uh, right. Actually, so you, just, you, so you I mean, added a pin on yeah. the coat and then it launched the color picker. Yes. You could pick an exact color to make that area, which is quite nice the way it reads it. Yes. It finds the edges so it doesn't it's bleed. What Mike, what Michael was talking about. Uh, uh, this one's taking a little while to process. As you can see, uh, down here because it's kind of in shadow and, but it did a great job finding it, but you can further fine tune that and I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, you get the idea and you can adjust your, uh, your hue sat stuff here if you want to. Uh, and uh, Becky, Becky says, I've been playing with the colorize feature and found sometimes it creates some interesting colorizing, especially in clothes, mm -hmm. much like this gentleman's jacket and two tones they are working on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's always getting better. You just cool. always keep that in mind. So, so can I do a colorize now too? Dude, of course. Uh, I just that I've had to show that off, and uh, it looks great. Looks and great. Uh, yeah, I mean, so so I wanted to kind of take uh, Micah's statement, and he says just keep adding pins, right? But yeah, I'm going to show I'm going to show an alternative to that. So let me go Ooh, over alternative. here. Alternative for you. All right, so adding to stream. And I'm just going to close this one. And then I'm going to go to this one. Oh, so I think I found this in the Library of Congress where you can get some free free images. Man, that's funny. I have a hat just like that. I mean, I I wish I'd worn it. <sighs> okay, one minute, let me just see. Yep. Okay, so you can see that just fine, right? The, with the plumed hat. That she, she borrowed John's plumed hat. That's right. She did. <laughs> well, okay. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, so I want to see this. Okay, so here we have this image. Okay, let's see what Chris says. 
a couple years ago i restored a very damaged one second uh, John, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. A couple ahead. years ago, I restored a very damaged photo of my parents on a date in the 50s at a restaurant. It took me weeks to restore mm -hmm. from water damage. Seeing this makes me wish I waited a little longer. I know I it's true. wild. So. And you probably spent hours on it, too. It's crazy. Cool. Okay, so just put this up there. I don't know if you need me. I'm just going to go to full screen. Oh, okay, so here we are. <laughs> you don't need my mug. Okay, so here we are with this old beautiful photo. I love this uh, plumed hat and just stylization of her dress with the jewelry. And then what happens is, once again, now just to, to remind you, if I go to window, it just has the regular name. Let me see if I go hit F a couple times. Um, yeah, it, it is a um, an RGB image. But just to remind you, if you start off with a grayscale image, you will need to go to image mode and choose RGB to be able to choose the colorize option and neural filters. Okay. So if it's grayscale, says that in the top title, then you just go to image mode and from grayscale, you go to RGB color. So that's important to learn because you wouldn't wonder why isn't it colorizing? That's, that's yep. why. Right. If you go to filter and then you go to neural filters then colorize might be grayed out so i choose neural filters out comes the panel and then when i get down to colorize i just click that on and it's automatically uh, colorizing them which is pretty amazing so it does a pretty oh. amazing job here Fantastic. and um it even it even puts like a little blue on the eyes and puts a little lipstick on there and has a mixture of like this kind of reddish orange and then the beige for her dress. And so That's you, you have all these different options here for cyan red, magenta green, which just means that it kind of leans more one way or yeah. the other. So you yeah. don't have that much control. Um, and then if you look in this preview up here in the right, um, as uh, Micah was saying, you could go and um, let's see, instead of, this being red, if I clicked here, and then instead of red, I chose like a blue, mm -hmm. then it will read that area and it'll add blue to that. Oh. The only the only problem that I've had with that is um, it, it has a hard time reading the boundaries, which mm -hmm. is to be expected considering how much detail there is. I mean, yes. this is not an easy image to read. Right. Um, so what I would tend to do is do Command Z, I'm pretty much happy uh, with where it's at. But what I do is, and this is something that might be overlooked, but it's very important. When you first, it starts off with auto color image, and it does that the minute you click on the button, right? Yeah. Then you have these options, which I don't tend to focus on. But at the bottom, I scroll down, it says output options. So this is to me, one yes. of the most important ones. So under output options, I always say output as a new color layer. And it shows you a preview, which is pretty freaky at first. <laughs> yeah. And then I hit OK. And then I'm back in Photoshop. So if I turn this top layer off, you'll see it's the you know sepia tone, black and white. And yeah. then I turn it back on. You see that the colors are all coming together and that this layer one is under the color blend, blend mode. Blend yeah. mode. So nice. that's, that's the magic that's happening. So for me, I like the, the idea that as long as I'm in this top layer, um, I can just choose a brush. And um, let me see. Maybe this brush is too big. So I'm going to click and just down. So, yeah. So I'm trying to get like that one. Just click off. So I'm getting like a little brush like this. And then if you recall that when you are in Photoshop, you're going over your image. And I want to get rid of this bleed. So there's kind of a bleed. I'll kind of zoom in. There's a bleed of the lipstick underneath her lip. Mm -hmm. Hit the left bracket to make my brush a little bit smaller. While I'm in the brush, I don't have to go anywhere else. I just hold the option key, click, and I pick up that kind of skin color. And then I paint over here, and it gets rid of, <laughs> it gets rid of that excess... Um, lipstick now it's kind of bringing a gray that i don't like so i'm doing a command z so i'm going to go up to the options bar so make sure you go up to the options bar where flow is hover over the word flow 
and then bring that up. I'm bringing up to like 70 mm -hmm. for stronger strength. Mm -hmm. So when I do option of this color and then I go over, it's still kind of making it gray. So it's not doing the best job. So maybe I'll grab the, the darker one. There we go. So I'm bringing the shadow color of skin. So mm -hmm. it's now blending with that skin color shadow mm -hmm. and not bleeding the lipstick. Now, if I wanted to add a little bit more lipstick, I could option click and then left bracket, smaller brush, and then paint a little bit more here to make it fuller lips. And then with the eyes, I can option click here. Now with this, when I option click on the eyes, it, I can see the foreground color looks a little kind of grayish. So now I'm going to click on that and decide to go from the gray side of things over towards more where the color is. So I'm gonna to go towards like a lighter blue. So I hit okay, so now this lighter blue is my foreground color. I go up to flow at the top, move it down to like a 30, yep, 31. And then it's already set to this top layer to color blend mode. All I have to do is kind of paint and I can add a little color to it. Might be a little too strong, so I'll just do a couple dots of it but already it brings a lot of color into it. And so there's little areas like this where I like the kind of um, golden color, but there's a bleed of pink. All I have to do is option click, pick up the color, and I can just paint right over it. So I find that to be much more kind of direct and satisfying yeah. than just pushing the, putting the pins mm -hmm. as I have control over it. Mm -hmm. And then, so as an example, if I'm here and I like the coloring here, but I feel like this red Mm -hmm. In this area, and the red in this area should be also distributed on the kind of bottom left area. I can right bracket, make the brush bigger, mm -hmm. option click, pick up that reddish brown. And then when I paint here, it's adding that exactly to where I want it. So I just like the control of it as opposed to just clicking the pins. Um, so I see it as a kind of two nature way of working you start yeah. off with automatic neural filter mm -hmm. and then you just go back and use the brush to choose your own palette of colors and then you could also do something like i don't know go up to window go to color and then you could have something like this so mm -hmm. instead of just option clicking you could choose other colors um, just for the sake of showing i could choose like a light green and then if i go here it could distribute little green sections if I wanted to. Sure. I don't oh. want to, but you know, you can get that detailed. And wow. I just like the control of it, the, the being able to go in and uh, showing yeah. how to balance that. Uh, but I love like this pink that it created for the kind of plumed hat. Yeah. But um, yeah. I don't know, just for the sake of this, I click here, I could say, well, maybe, maybe a light blue and then right bracket to make a larger brush bring the flow down so it's more subtle like a 20 yeah and then i could just there you go it's pretty strong though so even at 20 is strong so maybe like bring it down to 10 of flow and then when i paint it kind of blends in a little bit more mm -hmm. you know i don't know it's hard to differentiate where i want it look to. at you go with uh yeah okay <laughs> you know i was wondering that this this picture is i don't know 100 some odd years old yeah right and I wonder what they would think if they saw us, you know, 100 plus years later doing this to their pictures. With, Give them a heart attack. With magic. We would all be burnt at the stake. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, I'm being a little dark. I'm sorry. Don't scare them. I'm sorry. They're, they're turning in their back. graves. They're, they're turning it's in their right. graves now. It's amazing. And the lovely image, I mean, when it's colorized like that and all that detail, it doesn't look like an old picture anymore. It's just, you know. Hmm. Pretty cool. Oh, and, and what's the glamour shots? That's yeah. That's one more thing I wanted to show. So you reminded me. Um, oh, if I go speaking back, of glamour shots, that's why. Speaking of glamour shots, <laughs> so another thing to to uh, remember is by having the color layer go onto its own layer. If I look at the overall, and I think this looks good, but I wish there was more uh, contrast. Thank you, Ellen, for being here. Great. I can always click on the background layer, um, and you know. Dave Cross comes to mind because he's always saying, you know, work non-destructively. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to be able to go back and forth, I would right click and just say convert to smart object. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and make this, you know, curve tonal change. But if I'm working on this, th this has a certain look because the original image is kind of light. The, the contrast isn't that strong, right? But while I have that top layer of color on, I'm choosing the background. 
I can do on a Mac, Command M, on a PC, Control M, bring up the curves. And then what I like to do is under presets, I like to usually start by choosing linear contrasts. Hmm. And that gives us a slight bump. And then what I do is I take the points that they put and I bring them up. So I'm making the highlights a little bit lighter. And then the, the mid to dark tones I'm bringing down. So look at the brown hair. It start looking really oh. nice. I like that. Yeah, that is. And then maybe a little bit more of a point in the, the darks right here. Oh, man. So here's before where it has a kind of hazy look. Yeah. And then here's by just giving it a little bit a of little a, curve a curve and magic happens. Pretty cool, right? Curves. I mean, I have just Ooh. recently uh, begun to fully appreciate the power of curves. Yeah, it just it completely gets rid of the kind of haze, yeah. and it gives a nice contrast, and it even makes the colors look richer, and the, yes. like the hair looks totally different now. Like the hair exactly. looks really yeah, look at that beautiful. Yeah. So I hit OK, and I'm back, and then um, you know, so I could go to my history panel. So that's before, that's after. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with it. And like I said, by having your own layer for color itself, you can go back and just keep painting endlessly yes. to add to it. So, right. yeah, pretty cool. It doesn't end there. You can just keep going as far as your imagination will take you. Yeah. Speaking of which, I mean, there's even more options. You've already pretty much gone over um, photo restoration. So, I mean, we're already, you know, like an hour hour and almost 15 minutes into it. So I think what we might need to do is um, wrap it up and just focus on going over maybe just a couple of them next time when we go over neural filters. And who's who's to say that the next time we do this, there won't be a new neural filter introduced to the mix. So uh, did you have fun, John? No, I had uh, an absolute blast is what I had, Cool, actually. I'm sorry if I hogged it at times. <laughs> it's okay, Andrew. We'll let it go, man. I mean, uh, you were you're a rock star. What can I say? <laughs> we, I think we, you, yeah, you had some great, great images too. We had some f nice images mixed, and uh, I have been playing with this so much. And and, and again, you can go in and um, and if you go too far with something, you can go in, create a layer mask, and just kind of go back and and just you know keep tweaking it. And uh, you know, but the. The bottom line, at least for me, is that it will save you hours. In Chris's case, hundreds of hours of, of time of, of processing and then restoring and, and doing things like the hard way uh, speeds the process up considerably. Mike has the little piglet uh, icon for me. <laughs> That's just that, that meme. He says, great stuff, guys. Yeah, you're great stuff. <laughs> and, and speaking of uh, Micah, Micah Burke, um, let's go there. Where is he? Here we go. Um, he has also been doing some good tests with AIs. So soon enough, maybe in December, me, John, and Micah should do a, a live event. Would you be interested in that, Micah? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Say yes. <laughs> People say great tutorial. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Fun to play with. Yeah. So yeah, I hope this gave a nice uh, intro to everybody about the wonderful magic, the artificial intelligence magic of uh, neural filters in Photoshop. So they call that Adobe Sensei, which is the artificial intelligence oh. that Adobe's working on. And uh, yeah, thank you. Very informative. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for yeah. being here. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. And uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you know what I'll probably be doing tonight. This is my life. Friday night, I'll probably be in here playing with neural filters. And That's right. Restoring old photos, and <laughs> I might do that, but with a glass. Of a wine. party at the Williams house. <laughs> right, with a little glass of wine, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's. Good. I want to see some results after like last three of wine. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, thanks everyone for being here. But before you go, a little shout out. So first is, do consider. Uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel, Digital Art Drew. That's where all these recordings are. Been doing a bunch with uh, John recently, and I think it's we are a great team. So we'll keep doing more of these wonderful things. And uh, John might even have some uh, like After Effects uh, live events we could focus on too, right? Oh boy, we had I had some fun yesterday. I tell you, it was uh, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anytime. You, you, 
you guys tell us. And, uh, that's right. Tell yeah. us in the comments. So, uh, yeah. so that once again, that's digital art drew on YouTube. Feel free to subscribe. Please watch all these live events. There's a lot of them, me and John and other people in the industry. So some quite good ones. Also, if you are interested to see my digital art, you can find me on Behance at Drew Cav, Instagram at Digital Artist Drew, and then um, LinkedIn. I've been getting a, a bit into LinkedIn lately. So uh, yeah. Andrew H. Cavanaugh, my full full name on LinkedIn. I think you just do a search. but uh, And then my friend John here at Pixel Lingo Media on Facebook. That's your new biz page, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm... It's cool. it's, yeah, taken off. I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. good to have it. Good it's to have a page. Yeah, and you can also follow him on LinkedIn at Pixelingo, and then Instagram Pixelingo JW. Yeah, Instagram. I keep for. Yeah, we're, we keep getting some new features. Oh, yeah, the good news yeah. is there might be the option, top pin post. There might be the option <laughs> of uh, being able to stream with StreamYard into uh, Instagram in the future. Excellent. Susan said, just subscribe. Appreciate it. So yeah, they're changing the API. So you'll be able to stream into uh, from StreamYard into uh, Instagram. Oh, so, so okay. yeah, I, I use StreamYard. Nice. Use StreamYard to stream, multi-stream into uh, Facebook page, Facebook groups, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and uh, hopefully in the future, Instagram. So, yeah. Yep, uh, indeed. Micah says, awesome stuff. Susan says, yep. just subscribed. Thank you. Easy to follow and very informative. I like that one. So maybe I'll do a screenshot of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And yes. just remember, um, any new news, updates, contests, notifications about live events and this recording link will be in the top pinned post the top pinned post in the various facebook groups is where you'll find all that information yeah so keep your eye for the link to the recording feel free to share it with all your friends your companies states countries grandmother <laughs> uncle bob <laughs> tell them to just keep watching watch every that, single that guy video. out there on the street <laughs> share with him right you might have an iphone you know and just <laughs> yeah who knows watch all right well thank you so much everybody thank and, you uh, see you, in the you soon i think we're having I, one i have no hands what happened they're just gone it's neural we'll be doing one on retouching soon and also me john and andrea doing one for adobe express so oh, that'd be fun thanks everyone for being here have a good one.